This is Hacking the Afterlife podcast with Jennifer Schaefer. Jennifer? Richard. Is that you? It is me. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Happy 2022. Two, 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 two. Tootie, yeah. tootie, tootie. Oh, tootie. So, um, you're going to tell people what happened, how you... Yeah, why not? How you got yeah. me infected. Yeah, that's right. Uh, about three weeks ago, I came back from a funeral in Utah. Don't invite me to funerals because I make everybody laugh when we get there. But when I came back... <coughs> sorry. Still have it. Um, I was... I came down with COVID. My daughter was like, you got to go to the doctors immediately. And I did. I'm going to say, yeah, what's the matter with you? Why did you go to an uh, effing funeral? The doctor said, I'm like, hello. Well, you know, I can't, I could not go. And she was like, yeah, you could have. Anyway. So I came down with the big C and uh, went to the doctor's office and they gave me these antibodies. And apparently they're not giving them out right now because they're out of them. Anyway. So I was lucky. Um, went home, spent a couple of days in bed, a couple of difficult days. I really feel my heart goes out to those who've got it. Yes. Anyway, I was double vexed. <laughs> Sorry. Right. And then, then Jennifer, what happened to you? You talked to me and you gave it to me through the phone. <laughs> through the phone. I'm sorry. I was talking really close to the phone. We were, so now I understand why a lot of the outbreaks, like the one in Aspen that kind of, in it, like all the Australians that ended up in Aspen when COVID first came out, like yeah. why they get it at ski resorts, because we were in Mammoth. My son, Jack Schaefer, is a ski instructor in Mammoth. So if anybody's listening and has kids that go skiing in Mammoth, um, ask for Jack. Okay. That's for Jack. It's funny, I was just at the doctor's office and we were having a discussion. He loves to do skiing, but this is where there becomes a problem. Yeah. People don't hang out outside because it's snowing, right? Yeah. And, but if you go to a public place and you come home, like my husband went to go work out and he came back, he probably got it there. I don't know, but we didn't go anywhere because. So the both of you came down. Yes. So Freddie and I, our kids didn't get it. We you can still hear it in my voice a little bit, but we definitely we got it hard. We got it. Let me. It was challenging for three days, and then like the body aches. I, it was in. It was nothing worked for the body aches. Nothing worked for you know, and like it felt like somebody took a razor to the back of my throat. It hurt so bad I couldn't swallow. You know, it was one of those things, and I did have some pretty, you know, I had an amazing experience with my dad that I talked to you about. Yeah, you did. You want to tell people about that? Yeah, actually I do. Um, so my dad was more, you know, was a Mormon bishop when he passed. And, you know, regardless throughout the years, even though I wasn't Mormon every once in a while, I'm like, dad, can you give me a blessing? I'm like, it can't hurt. Right. So I asked him for a blessing because the first night that I had it, when I was home, I was in so much pain. I'm like, you, you start wondering, you know, what if I'm that 1% that I feel okay, I look okay, but maybe this blood clot's going to be released or whatever. You start thinking. Yeah, just, of course. How could you, you not? Me you too. I think that. So I asked my dad to come and give me a blessing and he showed up. And then my grandfather, my grandpa Coleman showed up. And then my grandpa Bethlehem showed up. And then my, my uncle Jack showed up, he died at 33. And all of them were bishops at one point in time in their lives. Every oh, single wow. Time. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, it was so, all of a sudden, everything just went away. Like all the, like the pain went away. Everything went away for just a few seconds. You know, I had this calming in my chest and I started crying. It was just knowing that he was there. Cause I know I wasn't thinking about my other, my other grandparents or my uncle Jack. And the fact they showed up was such a, it truly was a blessing for me to see. And I just started crying, you know, I'm like, I miss my dad. And you wrote me a, um, a stream of conscious uh, text or email. I think I remember. Yeah. But it was so profound and so deep and so unusual. This, you know, connection with a loved one on the flip side and them giving you this kind of insight into how the world works and how everyone is connected and how you can reconnect with people no longer on the planet through your heart. 
and through listening. I got I got an email from somebody on Quora today who said, just uh, Luigi Rossi, I think his name is. And he said, uh, I was doing a med- deep meditation and these two people came through in the Akashic Library and they started talking about our work and how it's helping people. And of course, he's a fan on Quora, so he's aware of our work. But it was it was like things that they wanted to impart just directly to me to say, you know, keep up the good work. The librarian says hello. And then another guy, same sort of thing, having a conversation with someone on the flip side who said, well, and this is a guy who most of his life would look for gurus, you know, people to sort of put all of his effort and energy. And the guide on the other side said, well, Richard is not a guru. He's a reporter, which is an unusual thing for someone to hear Right. In that kind of a construct, it's like new information. It's, right. it's what I would agree with. But at the same time, it's somebody I don't know, somebody he doesn't know, but is accessing the other side. So my point is, in this new year, we're going to help people to access the other side, showing how simple it is to yeah. set the intent, to open your heart, to meditate to think about them, to put a photograph of them, you know, just I mean, part of, it. yeah. Part of what my dad said was like, you're exhausting. I'm like, did you guys do this? I'm like, how, how come it happened when I got, when I was really sick? And he said that it's the only time that you were so, <laughs> you were in so much pain. You couldn't think of it's anything just, else. Couldn't so think, he, couldn't, couldn't let that block the thoughts. Constantly, and he goes, and you were the one sick. Like even when he came to me, I said, you know, immediately I went to, okay, who in my family is sick, or is there anything going on? And he's like, and then he showed me how that morning, how I was, our whole family, all seven of us, were texting each other on this thread. You can only imagine, and everybody was happy. And he was showing me how everybody's happy. He's like, no, I'm coming to you because I'm here. I'm always here. There's nothing. I'm always like, here. I'm not. Nothing has to be bad for me to come to you, and you always think that, which push, which then pushes me away. So, and I just want the audience to hear that again. Nothing bad has to happen in order for you to connect to your loved ones. Correct. So you don't have to. When you see them in a dream, you don't have to worry. Oh my gosh, is there something wrong? Think, oh, they're here to talk to me. What is it you want to say? Right. So, Luana. I know you've missed us terribly, but I know you've been around us at the same time. So what do you want us to talk about today or who's on your guest list? Okay. Well, the first thing that she says, and everybody knows, okay, Luana. And that's Luana Anders, actress who passed away in 1996, who who works like Jennifer, helping people connect. So she's helping people on the flip side, connect to our side and helping Jennifer to. She just showed me that the line's getting a lot longer over there. Um, but she said she she's happy that you're doing better, and she, she said that you made a turn on Sunday, like you really started getting better on Sunday. Or there was well, some turn that you had. Yeah, thanks for all the help, guys. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, well, it was easy to go through your daughter. They said then to go through you. So when um, you met earlier, he, she just showed me your daughter. Um, how you know they urged her to get you in. Yeah, no, that she was she insisted. My wife was kind of like, I don't know if he wants to go. The next thing I know, I'm in the car and I realize I don't have my shoes on. And I just was out of it. Anyway, I'm yeah. fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I hope everybody else gets fine. I, mean, so uh, I was fine. I'm wondering why, why is it that none of my symptoms are really there, but I feel weak. Like I still feel weak. I think that's related to the, their body fighting. That's what the doctor okay. just told me. By the way, the doctor was a huge proponent of elderberry. And he asked me, like, how did you guys come upon elderberry syrup? And I had to tell him the story. You know, Jonas Salk, on the flip side, told us that elderberry was going to be something that would help. But he's a huge, he takes it every day. And, that and he's never had it. So. And that was something that no one, we, I didn't even know what it was. Way no before any of the pandemic people. hit. Yeah. So, Luana, you probably have a cool guest list. Please, who needs to come through? Of course, I am thinking of Betty. 
because we all know that dear Betty died, passed away. Oh, Betty, Betty uh, White. Okay, is that who you want to talk to? I don't know if I'm thinking her. This is just something. Well, let Luana. She's got the list. Right. Lou, who wants to come forward on list? You're in charge. George, oh. Harris, George Harrison. George Harrison. Very good, George. You're always welcome. You used to be kind of a reluctant person when we'd ask for you. He would always like joke with us, tease us. But do you want to say something apropos of what? Well, I watched something. I watched their documentary, one of their shows that they have. There was get like, back. yeah, I get back. And he's like, what a clusterfuck that was. <laughs> like the first one, <laughs> they were, you know, sorry about the F word. Not sorry, but. No, uh, no, but very accurate because he was obviously distressed and didn't really want to be there. He's like, I, this close, this close. If it wasn't for Paul, I would have been gone. And I would have been gone because of Paul. <laughs> and the song that came out of that, I, if I'm wrong, you know, here comes the sun. Here comes the sun. <laughs> so George. But I don't want to put words in your mouth, please. What does what, what you like to talk about? We're constantly making songs. We're constantly making rhythm. Over there, you mean, or over here? Everywhere. We're making algorithms. Yeah, hold on. We're making algorithms. Well, that's the thing about string theory. Pythagoras was the first person to say it. Everything vibrates. Hold on. But he's saying, let's take it a step further. Instead of just going along on somebody else's algorithm, which is easy to do, meaning just like following, um, start creating your own unique algorithm that doesn't have a front or back door. What do you mean by that? You mean like that doesn't have an escape so you can get out of it, sort of focus on it? He's showing me um, <clears throat> how can that be? Like how, hold on. Do you mean, oh. He's showing me like with the, after, the afterlife and with this world, not having a beginning or an end. I was just going to ask him, yeah. the Tibetan knot which is, I was going to hold it up. I've got one over there. It's a knot with no beginning and no ending. It's a series of squares and there's no beginning and no ending. And they consider that life because there's no beginning ending to life. But he's suggesting create an algorithm that's like that, like the Tibetan knot, no beginning and no ending. It's both right. here and there simultaneously. But what's the intent that you should put in to build that knot? That's my question. Happiness. He's like, it's like a full mix of, he's almost showing me like a bunch of ingredients getting put into it. Happiness, kindness, love, more love. Compassion. Compassion, more love than that. And then compassion, which is love. And then just a cycle of it over and over again. So like a, an ingredient, okay, if you're going to have a big pot, you'd be pouring all these things in. Love, more love, compassion. Right. Um and the more consistent you are with it, the more you are it. So uh, let me clarify, <clears throat> whatever you do in life, as an artist or as a technician or as an engineer, put some love or put some heart or compassion into your work. In everything you do. And so that becomes a loop for you. So even if you're a person who's an engineer and hates working at the bank or hates working at whatever they're working, by putting a little love into it, is that what you're saying? Is that correct? Ingesting that kind of altering algorithm, I'm going to put love, whatever it means to you, into my work today. I'm going to make somebody laugh. I'm going to make somebody happy. I'm going to say something to someone that's a compliment that I thought of, but I never said it. So now you've put yourself in that stream. And he's saying that the more that you do that, so you think about, he goes, the more that you think about it and do that, the more you become it. Like we all know that, Brilliant. right? But well, we don't. We wish we did know that, but we've heard it. We've all heard it. We just don't really know how to how to manufacture it. And he's saying that's how you manufacture it. Fake it until you make it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
that as well. Well, that's brilliant. Thank you, sir. Did you feel you did that in your life? I mean, it feels like that. He goes, you can't fake kindness. That doesn't work. He goes, but if you're kind, even when you don't want to be, eventually it's going to rub off in you and start becoming part of you. Do you feel you did that in your lifetime, in your work? Towards the end, he said. Towards the end. Like I was a shit. (laughs) Oh, interesting. Were you upset, angry, or were you just... I mean, what was the genesis of that behavior? He just goes, me, 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 me. <laughs> ah, okay. And I asked you this before about seeing Ravi Shankar in the, on the flip side. And what was your experience like running into him or meeting him once he it? came over? His name is Ravi, R-A-V-I. You don't have to know who he is. But Ravi is a, somebody he knew very well. He knows who I mean. And what, I'm sorry, what was the question? question is, what was it like when you were able to connect with him again? Pure bliss. Pure bliss. Okay. And Pure his, bliss. Robbie's daughter is a musician. I won't say her name, but if, if you don't mind, George, would Robbie like to say something to his daughter? Yeah. Hold on. But she's doing everything right. And to stop sweating about the small stuff. About stop sweating the small stuff. I think, I think there's like, I, I feel like it has to do with either travel or not being able to, or. Oh, it could be because of the pandemic. Or she can't yeah. do her work. Right. And she, he says in time, like it's. Robbie, would you show Jennifer what your daughter does for a living? You don't have to say her name. Did you do Broadway? Or like, does she a little sing? bit? A little, like, did she I, sing? Did you say? Well, I felt she sang because I think okay. you said it. Okay, just start but, there. But, stop, start and stop there. She's a singer. Okay, you told me. I think you said it already. That's why I picked it up. I said she was a musician. Oh, okay. that's why I put it that way. Okay. Anyway, her she's, name is Nora Jones. You may not be familiar with her, but she's a multi Grammy award winning singer. I am and, familiar with her and I love her music. And oh, Ravi Shankar was her father, who was the best sitar player who ever lived. And George met him and became best friends with him. Thank you, three. Thank you, Ravi. And thank you, George, for that. Lou, I'm taking it back to you because I've only got Jennifer for so long today and we missed you terribly. So please, is there, is George still have more to say or is she's there like, other? How could you- She's like, how could you miss me terribly? She goes, when I was with you this whole time. <laughs> well, I don't get to laugh with you the way we do here. I know. Because you do mock me relentlessly. <clears throat> Lou? Okay. Who, who else? Okay, then why am I still thinking? Hold on. I keep seeing Betty White. I'm like, well, why do I keep seeing her? And they're like, well, she's here. And, okay, thank you. Newbies don't have boundaries, so she keeps showing up. But she's not supposed to be. She's not supposed to talk. I guess. Or she's not well, wait a second. She's jumped. She's jumped the line, and she's earned it. She's earned it. This is our class. All right, Betty. I have a question for you, and I won't. I won't belabor it. And Lou, you're going to help Betty understand and be able to communicate. Correct? Or does she have something she wants to say? She's just observing, and you know that she would tell me you know okay yeah. very good no no she's just observing i only that i only have one question for you yes she did say that <laughs> she did say what she mentioned her husband <laughs> that wasn't my question yes it was of course it was my question of course jennifer pulled the question out of my head i did i haven't talked to jennifer in, i don't know how long anyway thank you betty so but please what was that like to see him your husband Alan. It was so exciting. She just is beaming. It was just words can't describe what it was like. And when you saw him, from what I understand, it was the last thing you said that the nurse heard you say, or your hospice care person. And were you seeing him as a young man, as an older man, or how? I was seeing him as when we fell in love. Oh, it's sweet. Touching. Yeah. Beautiful. And we've talked about this. And so, Betty, you're always welcome. And and please take a seat and enjoy our conversation. And it'll and help she, you. I'm like, well, how old were you? And she's like 27. When she met him. 
I don't know, but that yeah, she there are photographs of the two. Yeah, she was young, showed, and beautiful, and she showed me that she was twenty-seven or something like that. Yeah, that's, okay. You know that that's the sort of age that she's remembering him at, and so that must have been a wonderful exactly. reunion. Yeah, is that because he passed forty-one years ago? Wow. So you know, for her to suddenly have him pop into the room. And was so I imagine it was startling, but at the she same time, that he visited her a couple of times, like you I know, see. days before as well. So he was, she was aware that he was on his. That was that was her journey. Well, Betty, I'll I'll come up with a whole bunch of questions for you at a later date. Yes. But let me just say, you're welcome to our class. I'm sure you're going to see some friends of yours here, because quite a few. Uh, because Luana was an actress and had appeared in over 300 TV shows and movies and Hold on. they all know each other. She said, I was looking for Chuck. That's interesting. Say it, say that again. Say no. that again. No, hold on. Please. You were looking for, I heard what you said. I'm going to say it again. I was looking for Chuck. Is that what you said? No, I said Jack. Oh, Jack. Oh, sorry. I thought it was Jack Nicholson. <laughs> Maybe he's still here. Well, don't forget his higher self is back there. I know. I know. But mm -hmm. looking for Chuck, I did have a Chuck question. Okay. Uh, Lou, is Chuck around? Can we ask Charles to come forward? Charles. Very good. Um, <laughs> what's he have to say? Well, he just like went in front of everybody. I'll vote everybody. Well, you know, you're oh, Chuck. God. We're... We are very close friends, and you're always welcome to the front of the line. <laughs> yeah. So, Chuck, you appeared. And he said, gotta, you, he said, you missed me this Christmas for sure. Yes, we did. And, but you did appear the other day, not to me, but to some other folks. Uh huh. And we conversed about it. Was it a brother? Um, no, brother, nobody like, in his family. Yeah. Okay. But mostly I'm interested in the content of what you were telling people because you showed up suddenly. I mean, we went to see a film, my family. And when the film was over, three of them, I mean, one of them said, you know, I had the weirdest feeling during the movie that Chuck was there and they burst into tears. Uh, then, there's, there's a specific thing in the movie that made him cry, too. Yes. Okay. And it was the idea that when the death doesn't stop you from continuing your journey. No. And, but then when, when, when my wife said that she sensed Chuck was there and heard him talking to her, both my daughter and son said the same thing. That's so weird. The same thing happened to me. I was, it didn't happen to me. So three out of four martinis in the theater sensed Chuck's presence. So what was that about Chuck? And what did you want to say? I wanted to confirm what it was saying. You already knew, but you were also not feeling that well. You already knew. Yeah, I wasn't. It's was funny. Wiped um, out. But. That, that life goes on and your yeah. journey goes on. Because Chuck was very yes. involved with ending the felony murder rule in the United States. This heinous law where if you loan your car to somebody, it goes off and kills somebody. You're responsible and you do life in prison if they do life in prison, even though you didn't know what they were going to do with the car. Chuck spent years trying to get that overturned and all countries besides the United States have overturned it. But on behalf of a certain number of people, he spent years and years and years talking to the Supreme Court Justice Anthony Kennedy, et cetera, et cetera. And what came through in this message was to continue his work in small ways, you don't have to solve it, but little tiny ways, just talking about it right now, for example, people don't know what it is. And when you read what it is, you can't help but say, if you have any compassion for humans at all, you right. can't help but say, oh my God, that's ridiculous. This one guy is doing, well, he was doing life in prison because he loaned his car to somebody. The jury said, oh, you knew what they were going to do with your car. You're going to drive over and kill this guy, blah, blah, blah. But they commuted a sentence of 25 years. I got an email the other day from somebody who knows him well. It was like, I'm so sorry Charles died because 
he was so important to these people. And that's, I didn't, I didn't share that email with anybody, but that night we went to see this movie and he was there in the theater saying, keep going on. Your work doesn't end when you leave the planet. Nobody's work does. Beautiful. Chuck, what do you want to tell us? Anything? <laughs> Where? Oh, you said at your Christmas tree. You didn't, did you not have a Christmas tree? We did. You did. We do. It's yeah. we will. March is when I take it down. Do you have like, um, <clears throat> tchotchkes? I don't know what they are. There's some, it feels like a decoration. Oh, is there something from Chuck? We might have something to do with CNBC or something like that. Yeah, I think that when I was at CNBC working for them, I went to their Christmas party and, you know, have stuff on the tree. That's so funny because he's mentioning that. Listen, what a funny guy. Last night we were watching a show that included Merv Griffin. And I turned to my son and said, you know, Chuck took man Merv Griffin. And he was like, what? Anyway, Chuck, we love you. All right. You're, you can has, pass the mic. Lou, who else needs to talk to us? She does. Please, Lou, what's up? Thank you. She says, tell everybody that this too is going to pass. So I believe just everybody getting sick, you know. Pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, it's just going to it's not that it's going to go away or it's, or like, there's not going to be another pan. It's not that there's going to be, there's going to be different things that we're going to have to adjust to. As humans. As humans. Yeah. Lou, let me ask you this question. People have asked me about it before. And when you try to crystallize it, like, why did this happen? Why has this happened? You can point to the earth and say, well, the habitat of humans because we've destroyed animal habitats, we're in closer proximity with animals who carry diseases that are lethal to us. That part of that is climate change. So if we're gonna address these issues, should we be addressing climate change? Oh, okay, something wrong with your nose? No. <laughs> well, said yes. our, our podcast audience can't hear you. Oh, sorry. That's all right. She's saying, on the nose, Richard. You're getting oh, that correctly. Yes. Well, Jennifer, I love that you tap your nose when I actually hit it. I get a base hit. Well, that's the question. So then, Lou, is this research we're doing, this talking to you guys on the flip side, going to help the planet? It already has with the trees that people listen, like listening to us talk about the trees and planting trees. People have done that from just... Wow. You know, whether we're the first, thank you, whether we're the first ones that said it, but if there's enough repetition, then eventually people are like, oh, yeah, we should plant more trees. I mean, it's such an obvious thing. And, you right. know, the fact that we got it from a tree who said, hey, if you plant a trillion trees, you're going to lower the carbon in the planet and the oxygen will go up. Now, that's also true about sea plankton. That's also true about anything that creates oxygen. But it, when you're talking to a tree, the tree is going to talk about themselves as opposed to the sea plankton. So they're talking about if you plant a trillion, right. not a billion. So a trillion means a thousand countries have to plant a billion trees. There's only 200 countries in the UN. So do the math. A lot of people got to get out there and plant trees. Anything you can do to plant a tree is going to help the planet. And conserve water. Conserve water. Yeah, okay. have we talked about that before? Not really. We've talked about using water for energy. Right. But conservation of water. Listen, there's a group that I might be involved with this year. We'll see. But they're talking about, or they're asking questions to uh, religious leaders to help. Like, what should people on the planet do? I mean, in terms of, they have to move because, you know, the as everything melts, the seawater is going to rise. What should people be focusing on in terms of how to save those people who live in low-lying territories? Should we be focusing on moving them upland? Hmm. 
Or is that too big of a question? No, I just was getting a couple of other things. You know, I just saw earthquakes. Like there's a lot of different places that are going to be, you know, tornadoes. Like it's happening everywhere. It's happening everywhere. So the idea is to try to focus not only on fixing the planet, planting a trillion trees, but also helping people that can't help themselves get away from those areas. And if there's any kind of logical architecture that we could push them towards. It is something that everybody needs to do their part or else it just will be, un- it'll be broken. She's just yep. showing me, she's showing me like hands just dropping. So. Um, what do you mean? Like hands together. And if you'd let go, then all the hands drop like that. Right. We've like, all got to help each other. We all have to help each other. Yeah. All right. And how do we do that? Lou? <laughs> Simple question. Worldwide podcast. <laughs> so you keep you keep doing what you're you keep talking about it, you keep thinking about it, you keep doing it because it's just it takes little, you know, little movements here and there. A little at a time. Yeah. And if you can just do it around your neighborhood, I mean that is it, it is a ch- consciousness changing awareness of how to do it around yourself and with yourself. I mean, it does go back to that the comment about loving yourself. Loving the planet, loving why you're here, loving the people that are around you, even if they're problematic to you, to find a way in to change that paradigm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, What else, Lou? You should love trees like you do humans. (laughs) Treat them with respect. Help them grow. Well, we've heard that. Yeah. We've heard that in the research of the people communicating with trees and a tree saying, well, you, you humans used to communicate with us. You forgot how to listen. So part of it is opening yourself up to the possibility of communicating with a tree. Right. Hold on. And she says, small, any change, small change is great. It goes, it, She's just showing me the rippling effect, like in a pond. It's funny. I don't know if you knew this, but I posted a a podcast. Well, it was an interview. August 2019 that I did with you. This was sitting online while waiting for us to get back together. And it's it's a podcast with avatars. A whole bunch of avatars showed up. Krishna and Jesus and everybody. But at some point, you took a piece of paper and you tore it off. And then you made this face and you went, what? What's the matter? And, and somebody, it was your dad, just showed you an image of a guy taking a gun and shooting a tree. Because you were like the wasting paper. Oh, my gosh. And then and you were like, what? Who gave? I said, who gave you that image? And you went, my dad? Well, you didn't believe that in life. And then you were arguing with your dad. And he was trying to say, well, from over here. I have this perspective. Let's take it back to you, Jim. Well, yeah, this is so funny too, because I just got an iPad, so I wouldn't stop. I just bought using an paper with a pencil and brought my pencil down, but forgot my <laughs> iPad upstairs. So Jim, to Jim, let's go back to you. Pad. Jim, let's go back to you. Jennifer's dad, who's been so generous with his time and t- and showed us so many things: Kashuk libraries, classrooms. What's your advice for people this new year, coming into the new year? What what do you think we should focus on? That's great. Hold on. Sorry, I'm squirming. Um, hey, Dad. <laughs> Take a deep breath. Learn how to breathe. Everyone's walking around trying not to get sick or holding their breath, and he goes, it makes it worse. Learn how to breathe. Take precautions, mind you, but learn how to breathe. Um, let go of stress, let go of anger, let go of yeah. problems. What do you mean? He showed me like it's a curve here. And I'm like, well, what do you mean by that? And he goes, it's going to be a, an action packed year for everyone. <laughs> so he's given us the roller coaster version. It's going to be all right. But as Jim said, learn how to breathe. He, then he's literally on the roller coaster actually on the roller coaster 
And then he said, um, it's going to be fun too. You just, it's whatever you make of it. So right. if you stop trying to avoid it. Just get on it and know that you're, there is going to be, show me again. Okay. Sing me back to the beginning. Okay. Get on the roller coaster of life and be excited about it versus fearful about it. Because people that get on roller coasters sometimes are scared to death, but they always, you know, or, or enjoy the ride. The more he's showing me, the more that you're holding on tight and the stress, he's like, that's no fun. And that's, what's going to come out in your energy field. But if you just enjoy the ride and just take it for what it is, you know, and try not to hurt anybody on the way, stay in your lane and love it. Love being out in the fresh air. Love being out. Like, don't take, do not take any of that for granted. Um, I met a friend last night and we sat outdoors. You know, you just bring extra jackets or whatever. And you know me, I don't need a reason to wear a jacket. I love my jackets. They're like big blankets. Anyway. And I started noticing like the trees and the wind. And like, if you start being great, we take things. I know I, not that I take it for granted, but how great is it that we can sit outdoors in the middle of January, still in December, apparently in my head in January. And you can like, just enjoy it. Like if you do go skiing, enjoy skiing. Like don't look at things as people are fearing the fear factor needs to come down. The collective fear factor needs to come down. That's brilliant. So that's about learning to breathe. You breathe in. Let's stress go. You let it go, but then you also give it space. That's actually pretty smart. When you, when you concentrate on your breathing, like meditation, when you breathe in, you then notice things. Don't you notice things? Even when you're trying not to notice things, don't you notice things that are etheric? Like, oh, wow, there's that cloud over there. Or, you know, we've had fog all morning, which was weird over here, you know? Um, okay. And then gratitude. He goes, it's everything you guys have known, everything you've talked about before. But start... Okay. Thank you. Like start consciously. It goes back to what George Harrison was saying, like start thinking about all the things that you're doing, like all the things that, that you're grateful for. Like I'm grateful for the fact I have an office at home. (laughs) I made my little office at home. You know, I can, and I'm grateful that I have an office that, you know, that's close by. I'm grateful that my daughter, you know, gets out at 1230. (laughs) I love the fact that she's getting her, how great is it that we have access to boosters? She's going to get her booster today because now they're, they've made it available. Um, I'm grateful that her school has test kits. You know, she gets tested twice a week now because she's in dance. Like you can make it like a speedball thing of gratitude that takes you, it, it then makes your energy field so much lighter. You know, Brilliant. like, and then he showed me, like, I felt weak today. Like, I'm like, and I have a full day of work, but I always feel better working. And right. I'm, I'm, how lucky am I that I get to do that? Yeah. And how lucky are we that we get, a, we get to celebrate that with you? I know. I wish you, I love, I love our thread. <laughs> hey, what time? <laughs> yeah. I'm on one thirty. Cool. <laughs> Yippee. Okay. Maybe 140. (laughs) Right. That's us. That's Jennifer and I planning the podcast. Well, in the few minutes that we have left. Oh, that's right. Let's, I want to thank everybody who's been tuning in religiously. Um, Thank you. Another funny thing. What? Oh, sorry. I just said thanks. Your dad. Oh, he's so cool. Uh, Yeah. Rich. He's not a guru. He's a teacher. Go ahead. No, I just want one. I love you. That's what he did. I love. That's what he used to do. I love you. Um, well, and Jim, uh, you know, his, his story about the class that is he, let's ask him, are you still taking that physics class, Jim? Are you still out there attending a class in deep space and astrophysics? Oh, that's funny. He's like, Richard, I'm teaching it now. Oh, geez. <laughs> is that right? 
Are you joking? I'm teaching the kindergartners. So oh. You know, like the kindergartners of like the big universe, the different, yeah. Is that how you used to call it, kindergartners? I like kindergarten, that. Kindergarten. kindergarten. <laughs> I love that. I love the kindergartens. But that's fascinating because astrophysics is about quantum mechanics. It's about what we're talking about. We're talking about the dark energy or the dark matter that's in the universe that may or may not be consciousness. These are the things that we're talking about where people on the flip side talk about seeding other planets and other galaxies so that life, our lives at some point in the distant future can go incarnate there on right. another type of earth without having to travel to get there because right. space is all like this when you're on the flip side. Very unusual stuff for us to be discussing other than, you know, people think our podcast is about talking to celebrities. But obviously, we ask celebrities what they want to talk about. Right. Not necessarily celebrities. And, and of course, some of them aren't ready. Like Betty White wasn't, there was, she wasn't ready. You know? we, yeah, we've had that as well. I remember uh, Burt I try to pay I try to pay attention to that. I try to pay attention to, you know. You know and of course, even when they tell me I'm, where I'm not ready to talk to you, I'll ask them, well, I just got one question. And then there's follow-up questions to all that. I've had it happen where I'm doing a session with somebody who told me like I've been banned from going to see my council. And then I say, well, let's go there and just see if we can talk to one person. And then I ask, so why'd you ban him? And they go, he wasn't ready yet, but he is now. So come on in. So part of it is letting Betty get acclimated to our class and how images in her mind then get translated through Luana through to you that you can then pass it into a story. Right. Just the way the telegraph key works. Did we talk about the telegraph key really quickly? No. I know I got 60 no. seconds. I had a dream about a telegraph key. I was talking to somebody on the flip side about it. I said, why? What is this? Why is this important? They said, you're, you humans are telegraph keys. So a telegraph works. There's two wires and the energy goes. And each time it clicks, that becomes dits and dats, dots and dashes. And that becomes an image or a word. Just the way ones and zeros are an image or, or words or emotions. Mm -hmm. And we're the telegraph key. We get information from them on the flip side. And then we, you, Jennifer, translate that into emotion, translate it into a right. reality. So that's why it's important to focus on why am I the telegraph key? Okay, that's it. Happy New Year, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Jennifer, we love you. Thanks to George. Thanks to your dad. Thanks to Lou. And thanks to Charles Grove. We appreciate you. We love you. And we'll catch you on the flip side. Bye. Bye. This has been Hacking the Afterlife podcast with Jennifer Schaefer. For more information, jenniferschaefer.com, martinizone.com, or richmartini.com. Hacking the Afterlife documentary is available on Gaia.com via Amazon Prime.